Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be replacing the water pump and thermostat on a 2.7 liter Ford EcoBoost engine. Now this particular vehicle is a 2015 2.7 liter Ford F-150 XLT with about 120,000 miles. And what we're experiencing is just a little bit of seepage from the weep hole on the water pump. Very slow leak. Um, you can see our reservoir is just about dry and the customer says that he has to add water about every week to get that level back up in the reservoir. In the first part of this video, we're actually gonna be replacing the thermostat. Um, you have to remove the thermostat in order to remove the water pump. So if you're watching this video just for the thermostat, the first part of the video is gonna be for you. But before we begin, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna to need to get the job done. All right, so we'll need a 15 millimeter socket, a 10, an eight, and a seven millimeter socket. We'll need a three inch, three eighths extension, 3 8 ratchet, flat blade screwdriver, some channel locks or pliers. And also I'm gonna be using uh, my little power ratchets by Milwaukee, they're the M12 series. Not necessary, but to make the job go a whole lot quicker. And of course, here are parts. Um, depending on what you're doing, you're gonna to have to buy the parts a little bit differently. If you're just doing a thermostat, um, you're gonna to have to buy a thermostat and the gasket separately. If you're doing the water pump and the thermostat, what's nice is if you buy directly from Ford, a Ford OE part, they're gonna include the thermostat, thermostat housing, and the gasket. Um, and also one thing to note is that um, it comes with a three bolt pulley what you might notice is that some of these engines actually have a four bolt pulley on the old pumps the new ones come with a three bolt pulley and also three bolts um three brand new bolts for that um so remember buy yourself a gasket and the water pump comes with a thermostat and seal all ready to go and then we're also going to need to buy a ford compatible coolant i like this xerix um made by valvoline it's pretty good quality coolant i'll also include all the uh, part numbers in the description of this video so you can go online and buy the parts for a pretty good price All right, so the first thing that we need to do is just disconnect the battery via the negative terminal using a 10 millimeter socket Now we need to go ahead and drain the coolant Let's go ahead and take the cap off our reservoir and then we're gonna go down to the petcock down below the radiator to release the water and here's the little red drain bolt right here. Um, using a large flat blade screwdriver, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up and allow the coolant to drain out. It is a little bit hard to find, so in relationship, here's a body mounting bolt, and here's your charger uh, cooler pipe right here on the driver's side. Um, so just kind of by the front grill area is where it's at. All right, while our coolant's draining, let's go ahead and just remove the intake pipe using a seven millimeter socket or a flat blade screwdriver. All right, next thing I like to do is just to go ahead and remove our charge pipe to our throttle body. A uh, couple notes on that. Um, you have a couple small hoses go into it, one with a white clip here. Go ahead and just depress that clip and it pops out. Um, and then we're gonna have to remove this sensor here, or at least the connector to the sensor, just by depressing the back of the connector and pushing out. Now that our charge air cooler hose is out of the way, we can go ahead and remove uh, the hose clamp right here, the hose clamp down at our water pump, and the hose clamp um, that goes to our thermostat. Now one little tip that I have for removing these um, self-tension hose clamps is just spray a little WD-40 on the hose and the clamp itself, and it really makes the, the clamp slide on the hose a lot easier. You won't be fighting yourself doing that.
once your last hose is off, you can just bend that whole hose assembly out of the way. All right, next thing we need to do is remove the outlet pipe for the water pump. Uh, using an eight millimeter socket, there's two bolts, and then we can remove the thermostat and seal. With our belt still on, let's go ahead and crack loose these three 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to allow the belt just to have a little bit of tension on this pulley. So when we go to turn these bolts, the pulley doesn't turn. Um, you may have to, if you don't have an impact or an electric wrench like I do, you may have to hold this pulley in some way to get these from spinning. Um, but after that, let's go ahead and take a 15 millimeter socket and loosen the tension on the belt tensioner to remove the belt. Now that our pulley's out of the way, let's go ahead and remove all eight eight millimeter bolts that hold the water pump on. All right, now that we got the original pump off, let's go ahead and remove the old gasket. Uh, you could take a small pick or um, you know, just something plastic to go ahead and pick this off. Make sure not to score the aluminum. And then we're gonna have to remove our little grommet out of this pipe here. It's kind of stuck on. Make sure you don't move this pipe too much, but we need to remove this grommet right here because the new water pump has a brand new grommet on it. All right, now that our old gaskets are off, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this mating surface with a little bit of great clean, getting this dirt off and making sure that our new gasket is safe to go on and seal correctly. All right, now that our new gasket is pressed on uh, and into the block, let's go ahead and take our brand new water pump and put it on. One thing that Ford says to do is to take this tube seal right here and put some coolant on it. And that way, when we go to press it right here into the block, um, that coolant will actually act as a lubricant and help the water pump uh, go onto the block a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna take some coolant and dab it in here and let's throw this bad boy on. All right, before we start putting the bolts in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the water pump is sitting on the dowels correctly. There's a couple dowels around, around the flange of the block, and uh, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that that water pump is seated good before we put these bolts back in. Now there is seven eight millimeter bolts, and then there is an eighth bolt, which requires a 10 millimeter socket to remove. Um, both of them will require different torque specs, but first let's just get all these bolts in hand tight. So I went ahead and put all these bolts in hand tight. What Ford is calling for us to do as far as torque specification is all seven eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and torque those down to 89 inch pounds. And then we're gonna give it another quarter turn with our um, torque wrench. On the one larger 10 millimeter bolt right there, we're just gonna torque that down to 18 foot pounds and then that's it. So stage one on the smaller ones, eight, uh, 89 inch pounds and then Stage two is gonna be a quarter turn, uh, and then just one stage for the 10 millimeter bolt down here at 18, inch, uh, it's 18 foot pounds. Now with our new pump on and all the bolts torqued down, let's go ahead and put our new pulley on uh, with our new three bolts. All right, so with our belt back on, let's go ahead and put our hoses back on. Um, 
I like to again use some WD-40, helps them slide on wherever they're going a little bit easier. All right, now that everything's put back together, it's time to go ahead and add coolant back into the system. One thing to keep in mind, total capacity for this motor is just over four gallons. However, everything didn't leak out or drain out. So we're gonna be adding about two and a half gallons into the system. Once you add that two and a half gallons, go ahead and pay attention to the min and max mark on your coolant reservoir. Start the motor, turn the heater on, and uh, just continue to run the motor and keep an eye on that level. Some air will bleed out of the system. Um, this motor is pretty good about bleeding the air out. Haven't had too much trouble with that, so let's go ahead and top this thing off. Alright guys, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. Uh, make sure to check the links in the description for the parts and tools that I used in this video. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.